Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Kronos on Hack the Box. Now, this is part of the uh, Hack the Box walkthrough series on the various retired boxes and the machines that have just been retired. Uh, we're also going to be adding these videos to the OSCP prep or playlist or the OSCP prep playlist on our channel because we've covered a lot of boxes on Hack the Box, uh, more specifically or more tuned uh, to, to actual uh, Windows and Linux pen testing and are very helpful when preparing for the OSCP. So the way I'm structuring these videos, I'm going to be taking you through uh, the exact solutions I, and I, uh, that I use and I'm going to be covering key points or very important elements here so that you actually learn from these videos as opposed to me going through them and not really explaining what I'm doing. Uh, that being said, let's get started. The box that we're going to be covering in today's video is going to be Kronos and uh, Kronos is a Linux box and it's a medium rated in terms of difficulty. However, it's one of these boxes that I feel is really, really cool because it uh, it actually combines some very, very important elements of pen testing, uh, you know, including DNS, uh, so a lot of DNS enum, uh, performing web app exploits, and of course, local Linux enumeration, which is extremely important. So uh, the first thing we want to do is... Um, you can see that if we take a look at the machine matrix, it says that this is going to be primarily to do with enumeration and it's more real life based as opposed to CVE and anything else. So that gives me an idea of what I'm dealing with. Uh, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I just want to display uh, or cat out the Nmap results. You can take a look at my Nmap scan here. I've pretty much covered Nmap now, so you guys pretty much know what's going on. Um, so it's quite an, uh, a comprehensive scan in terms of TCP ports. Now we have three services running. We have TC, we have uh, SSH running on port 22, and the service is, is OpenSSH 7.2 P2. That's going to be important in a while. We then have DNS running on port 53. We then have uh, an Apache web server running on port 80. So uh, again, as I said, we're going to be taking a straight line path directly through how to go through this box, and I'm going to be clearing out, uh, up a few things. So first of all, if we take a look at this version of OpenSSH and we use something like Searchploit, Right, so I just type that in and hit enter. You can see that it is vulnerable to something, uh, is to username enumeration, right? And this is a Python script that you can run. And to a certain degree, it'll actually give you or allow you to enumerate users on the system. And of course, this is uh, a tuned or this is tuned towards OpenSSH 7.2 P2. And now this is one of those rabbit holes on this machine that you can get sucked into. But I'm going to be teaching you how to focus on the low hanging fruit. So first of all, if we take a look here, you can see that we have a very interesting port running, a very interesting service in the context of, uh, you know, CTFs and boxes or, uh, you know, uh, target boxes. We have DNS running. So in the case of Hack the Box, what we want to do initially is we want to use Vim to edit the host file and we want to add the, uh, the actual domain uh, because it's DNS that allows us to get the other, to, to actually access Kronos.hackthebox. So if we go say vim etc hosts and I just enter in here, you can see that we can now add our IP address and their corresponding domain names. So if we say, for example, 10.10.10.13, which is the IP of the Kronos box, we can then put in the domain. So we can say Kronos.hackthebox, right? We can add that in there and I'll just hit, uh, I'll just save that, not that file. So before we do anything else, let's try and access the web server to see what's running on it. So if we open that up, you can see uh, we can open up. I have it right over here because I was actually testing the page to see if, it's, if it was working. You can see immediately this takes us to the default Apache uh, Ubuntu page or the index file on Apache. And that can also be uh, demonstrated by taking a look at the title here from the Nmap script, the default Nmap script that was run. That tells us that it's running a default index. Uh, this is actually just giving us the default Apache installation that you typically have after setting up Apache. So if we open up Kronos.hackthebox, this will take us to a web page here that is, again, is a very simple web page that, again, you can go through the source. We have some simple... Uh, uh, we have some simple internal styling, CSS internal styling. And then, of course, at the bottom here, we have various links that take us to laravel.com, docs, uh, Laracasts, Laravel News, Forge.laravel.com, and GitHub.com to the actual GitHub repository for Laravel. Now, if you're not familiar with Laravel, Laravel is a PHP framework. Um, you can actually take a look at the inf the information given there. So, this is a PHP framework that uh, that is going to be very important in a few seconds. So, again, th this is pretty much giving us an idea of what's going to be running. Let's go back to our services. So. We were able to tell that we have DNS running. So that means we can perform some DNS enumeration. 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to try and list out uh, the name servers, or we can actually use the host command and uh, we can try and enumerate information. So if we use host, right? So I'll say host, and let me just clear out my screen here. So L, host L, and then we type in the domain name. So chronos.hackthebox, and then the actual server IP, we hit enter. You can see this tells us that um, we have the name, the address, and we get the name server. So the name server is ns1.chronos.hackthebox. And we then get the uh, the subdomains admin.chronos.hackthebox has the following address, etc. And we have the name server itself. And we have a www uh, address here, which again is really not that relevant. Uh, again, we can also use a tool like dig to perform a uh, to, to actually see if we can perform a, a DNS um, zone transfer. So we can say dig AXFR standard uh, syntax there. So dig AXFR, we then provide uh, we then provide the actual uh, domain name and then the name server. So we can say dig XFR domain name is chronos.hackthebox and we say at 10, 10, 10, 13. Hit enter. That is successfully able to give us a zone transfer and we can see we exactly, we get the results that we were able to get earlier with host. So we can see that we have a new, uh, we have a new subdomain here, which we want to add to our hosts here. So if we go into our host file, and we open that up, we say 10, 10, 10, 13. We then say admin or chronos dot hack the box, right? We add that there. And if we try and access this now, I'll just uh, take you there right now. If we just open up a new page and we say admin dot chronos, uh, chronos dot hack the box. That takes us to a simple login page or a login panel that simply tells us login with your username and the password. And if we view the page source, we know for certain or one thing for certain we're running PHP, right? So that's very important here. And um, you can see that uh, it doesn't give us much in regarding to the uh, in, in, in regards to the actual form here. Um, so what we can do is we can try and try and enumerate a bit of information. So we try the single quote here just to see what we get back. So it tells us you know, your login name or password is is incorrect, we can say admin admin, just try and log in with default credentials, that doesn't give us anything. So we can really just perform a quick Google search here. So Google google.com. And we search for I'll just open this up in English, and I'll search for a SQL injection cheat sheet, right. And that'll give us more information that we can use or more commands that we can use to try and perform some, you know, some login bypass, uh, some login bypassing here. So I'll just scroll all the way to the bottom here. This is on netsparker.com and uh, we want to look for the login tricks. So SQL injection 101 login tricks. And we can try out any of these commands here that will actually try and bypass. So in here, we're saying admin, and then we provide a comment. And uh, I'll hopefully be covering videos on exactly what is happening when you submit these queries. So I'll hit submit, that doesn't give us anything. So we can go back, and we can try out for example, this one right over here. So this is a logic test. And is again is frequently very, very successful when you use it. So I'll hit submit, that doesn't log us in, we can try out the next one here. And we'll just go back to the login page, and we try and log in here. And just hit submit. And we're able to successfully bypass the login page. Excellent. So now you see uh, pretty much a standard within CTF This is not something you're likely to run into. But again, this will teach you important aspects of command injection. So you can see that uh, we have a net tool version 0.1. If we view the actual source here, we can see essentially we're able to perform a, um, a trace route and a ping command, right? So if we take a look at this here, we take we have trace route and a ping and if we hit execute, that doesn't give us any results. If we click on ping, we hit execute. Uh, we're going to give that a few seconds looks like it's loading. So we'll just let that complete. Um, let me just move my mic up a little bit here. So you can see it actually displays the information. So it actually runs a command on the system directly. And it then outputs the the actual results, it tells us that uh, it actually pinged the default Google DNS, uh, the DNS server, uh, right over here, and it tells one packet transmitted, etc, we get the information back. So if we try and perform some OS command injection, we can, uh, again, uh, we can, uh, we can actually terminate the command there and then run a new one. So we can say, uh, in addition to this, I want you to run the following, we can say something like ID, try and run the ID command. And you can see with trace route, and I think with ping, it'll also work the same, we're able to get the actual uh, results of the ID command on Linux, which 
pretty much lists out the default ID or the user ID that we're currently using. In this case, that makes sense. We're using www data, which means we're currently the web user here. So if we get access through this, uh, then our access will be attained and we'll be, we'll be able to, to actually get access as this user here, which means we then need to perform privilege escalation. So let's see if we can perform some more commands. If I say something like ls, right, under trace route, so I, I can actually list out the actual directory here. So it tells us we have config, index, logout, session, and welcome.php. That's interesting. So what we can do is we can try and set up a reverse shell using netcat. So I'll open up my terminal here. And again, we can say netcat, nlvp, uh, nvlp, whatever. Uh, we can then enter a port or a uh, yeah, port like 1234 or just 4444. Hit enter. And we're going to let that listen. So if we just go back into Google and um, we say google.com and we're going to search for a netcat reverse shell right we can just search for that really quickly and we can use any of these commands here and there we are it looks like we have our video right over there that's interesting very nice um we can actually get one of these reverse shells and um we can look for one that uses netcat so there we are this uses netcat and i'll just open up uh, sublime here there we are and i'll just paste that in there so we actually see what's going on i'll just change this to my ip or my box ip and I actually customized this to be uh, exactly like the Parrot OS themed version um, or the Hack the Box themed version of Parrot OS. You can see my IP right over here. So 10.10.14.6. So I'll say 10.10.14.6. Right, I'll then change my, uh, my port to 4444. And um, we can then copy this entire, this entire command, which is just going to give us a reverse shell using the born shell. So we go back in here. And again, we can then just paste in that right over there and hit execute. And that doesn't give us anything, which is interesting, right? So this is one of the, the really cool things. So we're going, to, we're going to ping here. Again, we can try and do that as well. We hit execute. Uh, that's going to take a few seconds. I'll just drag that to the side here and I'll drag the browser right over here so we can see what's going on at the same time. Um, so there we are. It actually ran the command, which was essentially a ping command. And that doesn't seem to be working. So we can also use the ampersand commands, a two ampersand commands, which means we are, we're actually running another command in addition to this one here. And we paste in the command there, the netcat reverse shell. That doesn't give us anything. All right, interesting. So that means there is some sort of filtering going on in regards to the commands that we can run. The easiest way of analyzing this is to take a look at the actual requests being sent to the server using a proxy. Uh, so we can use burp suite. So I'll just open up foxy proxy here and I'll turn on burp and I've already, I already have that configured. So I'll open up burp suite now and it's going to ask me for authentication, which I will gladly provide. And we'll give that a few seconds to start up. Mm -hmm. That should be starting up anytime soon. Um, just booted up my VM. So that might be the issue. So there we are. Burp suite is up and running. We'll uh, try and analyze the, the actual requests being sent. And let's see what's going on exactly when we send a particular command. Is there any URL encoding going on? Is there anything interesting going on in regards to how the commands are structured? So we hit uh, next for a temporary project. I'll just start that up. And um, there we are. We'll make sure we go into proxy and the intercept is set to on. So what I'll do is I'll just try and con I'll just try and add on a command like ID here. So I'll hit execute. And there we are. Let's take a look at this request now. So you can see that uh, we this is a simple post request being sent and all the other data is fine. Right over here, we can see the application or the content type is application uh, dub 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 form URL encoded. So that means there is some form of URL encoding going on, which is also demonstrated here. Now, the interesting thing in, re in regards to the data that is being sent to the server is we have a command field and a host field. So when specifying the command trace route, it's also expecting the host field. And then we are then uh, delimiting or 
we are also passing our command with the host field. So that is a potential issue as to why we can't, we are, we're not able to execute this. So a really cool thing we can do is we can just get rid of the trace route command, right? And we can then sp we can then provide or send in our shell here. And because this is URL encoded, we can use the URL encode feature with Burp Suite using the control and U keys on your keyboard, and that'll encode it for us. And you can encode it multiple times. So if, if I hit forward right over here, and uh, you can see that if I hit forward, uh, that doesn't give us any reverse shell. And we go back to the web. If we go back to the actual website here, it actually sent that request and we weren't able to get any reverse connection. So that's interesting. Now, if we perform a bit of research here, so I'll just open up google.com here. Google.com and let me just disable burp for one second. Open up google.com. We can then search for netcat. Um, reverse shell uh, URL encode, right? So if we perform a bit of research in regards to how to URL encode a netcat reverse shell, we'll come across a very interesting post here that actually covers how to get a reverse shell from a web shell, right? So again, it covers that right, right over here. So, you know, through remote code execution, SQL, OS shell and command injection, which is what we're doing. So if we take a look, we have all the languages here. We have Perl, Python, Bash, PHP. We go right at the bottom here to netcat. We have the standard commands that we were using, which was, again, we connect to our IP with the, with the port, and then we execute our shell of choice, which is either going to be uh, the born shell or the born again shell. And then right over here, we have another command, which looks to be actually dumping all the data uh, into the temp folder. So if we try and execute this, let's see whether we can actually make this work. So we copy that, we go back into um, sublime text, paste that in there. And we'll just expand this a little bit so we can see what's going on here. Uh, you can see that we just provide our IP here. So we'll just specify our IP. So we say 10.10.14.16. And we put in our port there, which is 4444. And we can then pass this to the web server. So we hit copy. And what I'll do now is I'll just go back to the net tool and I'll set up burp here. I'll just disable intercept and enable it one more time. And we can just hit execute there. We'll get rid of the trace route command and we'll paste that in here. And uh, do we have our listener running? Yeah, we do. All right, so I'll paste the command in here and then I'll just highlight it here and uh, URL encode with control plus U on your keyboard. And I'm just going to hit forward right and immediately we get a reverse shell back and this is using the the born shell so we don't have any job control excellent so we now have our initial access and that was done through command injection right so we're able to get a netcat shell excellent so i'll clear that out here and if we list the the actual directory we are currently logged in as the uh, we're logged in as uh, so if i type in id we're logged in as dub 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 data um, so we now pretty much need to start performing local enumeration. So if we cat the contents of issue, you can see we get we see we're running Ubuntu 16.04.2 LTS, and um, we try and list out the kernel. You name R, we can see that's running version 4.4.0, which I'm not sure is vulnerable to any kernel level exploits. Probably dirty cow. However, I did try that and I wasn't able to get any success there. So again, I needed to perform some more local enumeration. So again, we can try and monitor processes. We can, you know, grep out. Sorry, let me just type that one more time. So PS, AUX, and we're going to grep all processes belonging to the user root. Um, there isn't anything important here, but of course, if we go into the home directory and you can see we list out the users, we have a user called Nulis. Uh, so we say new list, hit enter, and um, there we are. We have the user flag, which I think we can access. So user.txt, uh, there we are. We get the user flag. So that was fairly simple. So that means we can pretty much um, cat Etsy password. If we try and enumerate the users on the system, we have the root user, which is where we are, we are going to be heading to. And uh, in regards to any other users, we only have new list, which we were able to actually get the flag from. So that's very interesting. That tells us a lot about what our next direction is. So as I said, uh, when performing local Linux enumeration, um, the first thing you want to do is establish the version of Linux you're running in terms of the distribution and then the kernel. The next thing is to monitor processes very closely. You then need to search and look for uh, potential binaries. 
or utilities that are set up because we're dealing with a CTF here. With pen, when you're dealing with a pen test, it's uh, marginally different in regards to your methodology because you're now dealing with a system that's not set up to be exploitable in any way. You're trying to look for uh, the, you know, trying to look for weaknesses in regards to how the system administrator has configured the system, right? So in this case, this is a web server. So it's uh, when performing local enumeration, it's very important to look at the regular places. And again, if we take a look at the actual machine name, the machine name is Kronos, right? And the interesting thing with Hack the Box is within the actual name, most of the time, it gives us a clue as to what uh, as to what we'll be dealing with. So again, in this case, it's telling us we're going to be dealing with a uh, cron uh, primarily, right? So as I said, we can list out the, the actual binaries being used. So cat or ls, let's list out al, al there we are, uh, user bin, hit enter, and we can list out all the binaries, we can go through all of that. However, the interesting areas are going to be within the actual processes, trying to analyze what's going on. So if we use P, ps here, and again, grep root, you can see that uh, we'll just scroll to the top here, we have pretty much our standard services running. And then at the bottom here, these are all processes that belong to the user root, you can see that um, we can go we have a cron being run here. That's very interesting. So we'll we'll take a look at that uh, shortly. Uh, we don't have any other interesting processes here. These are pretty much standard. Uh, the only interesting process is going to be cron. Um, so again, to enumerate cron is fairly simple, we say cat, we can actually list out so lsal and we say etsy cron and uh, we can then we can actually just look for cron so we say grep uh, cron hit enter so we have uh, our cron tab uh, we have cron.d cron daily hourly monthly weekly so let's try and list out the cron tab so if we say cron tab l we list that out so we say no we told us we have no cron tab for dub 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 data so we say cat etsy uh, cron tab hit enter we can see that we have a cron job running here and uh, there we are so we can actually see it right here we have a cron job running uh, looks like uh, this is being run every 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 minute every 30 seconds right so this is being run as the root user and it's being run using the command is uh, via PHP. And it tells us it's in the var dub 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 folder under Laravel. And it's uh, using the artisan, uh, the artisan configuration. So the artisan configuration allows you to schedule um, various tasks regarding your actual Laravel configuration or installation and it's uh, the schedule is set to run. So that's very interesting. And then the output is set to dev null. All right. So if we go into that directory, so var dub dub dub, uh, Laravel, um, Laravel, there we are, and we list out the contents of this directory, you can see we have the artisan file here. So if we cat the contents of the artisan file. Before we do that, let me just list out the permissions here, which is very interesting, you can see, if we take a look at the permissions, um, we have the ability to execute, right, which is pretty much a given given that this is part of a cron job, right. So if we cut the contents of artisan here, so we say cat artisan, forgot, we don't have any job control. And we, you know, just try and um, analyze what's within this, you can see that it uh, runs the artisan application, and it runs all of these commands here. So again, this is not really relevant, because I'm not really uh, that experienced in PHP, but I have used Laravel before. Um, so that being said, that means we can we can potentially use this to get a reverse shell, right, which is interesting or to get a reverse shell onto the system, right, because this is being run every 30 seconds. So what we can do now is we can actually get a PHP reverse shell. And then we can have this script actually uh, get that from our system, get the reverse shell from our system and execute it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'll just open up a new session here and I'll copy over from my downloads folder. I believe I always have my PHP reverse shell. I'll copy that into my current directory. So we'll say, you know, gzip decompress PHP reverse shell tar extract file PHP reverse shell. We're going to PHP reverse shell here. Uh, so I'll move this, I'll just change the name into rev.php. And uh, whoops, sorry, we're going to move uh, PHP reverse shell into rev.php, just renaming the file vim rev.php, we get into this right now. 
uh, and there we are. We have our options that we can con configure. And this is from Pentest Monkey. I'll actually post the link to this in the write up. So uh, I'll just add the actual uh, single code there. So 10.10, .10, this is the IP it's going to be connecting back to. So that's going to be our IP. So that's 10.10.14.16. 0.14.16. .10 and uh, we can take a look at the port here we'll we'll leave the port as one two three four because you're setting up another listener right so i'll just save that and uh, we can now pretty much try and uh, put in our php code into the artisan file that will be responsible for getting the file for us or getting the reverse shell for us and then after it gets it it can then execute it so to do that we can run uh, write a simple php script so we go back into the um into the actual box here via the netcat shell we spawned earlier and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say cat etsy or cat dev uh no so just to empty the contents of the file and we're going to say artisan right so we get rid of the the code that was there in the first place so if we cut the contents of artisan now it's going to be empty so we can say echo and i'll say um PHP and then we can run a system system call so we say system and then we can use a tool or utility like curl right so we can say curl HTTP uh, we'll then use the simple HTTP server with Python so 10.10.14.6 14.16 sorry the port is going to be 8000 that's the default port and then we, the code is going to be rev.php uh, Right, and then what we can do is we can uh, execute the command. So we say pipe, and then we say we want to execute this with PHP, right? And we'll close the single quotations there, and that's pretty much going to be our 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 PHP code here, right? So I'll close that out, and uh, we should be able to echo this into the artisan file here. So we'll just hit enter. But before we do that, let's set up our other listener. So netcat nvlp, and we'll say one two three four. Listen on that particular. Um, we'll li listen on that particular port and then we want to go back in here go into the php reverse shell folder and we want to set up so we say sudo python m simple http server and hit enter and that's going to be on the default um, on the default port here port 8000 right now that we have that running we can go back in here uh, we can go back into our initial, uh, our initial netcat reverse shell and uh, we should be able to hit enter and if we cat the contents of artisan uh so cat artisan and uh looks uh do we actually output that correctly so echo php system curl http reverse show php into artisan uh, that is correct so let's see if that actually uh so cat artisan Mm, that doesn't seem to be working so lsal let's just list the file one more time here we can then run the previous command so we'll just say echo we can actually just run the command here um uh, so i'll just run this right over here so echo php and then we use curl to get that from our server and we want output right i forgot uh my actual output uh command here so i'll just paste that in there and we out we are outputting this into uh artisan so artisan uh artisan hit enter and we cut the contents of artisan hit enter so it's gonna it's gonna run that command so if we check if we take a look at our actual web server we should be able to see a get request where it actually gets the reverse shell um the reverse or php shell and then it, it's going to run it so again we'll just wait for 30 seconds because it's running every 30 seconds we should get a get request here shortly i assume and then of course we set up our other listener which should then give us our reverse shell because we're listening on the appropriate port so if we go back in here again we're just going to wait for the 30 seconds um there we are we get the get request and we check our listener now we get uh, a, a shell with no uh with no job control and it gives us our our use id which is root so we were able to get root fairly simple so we can go into the root directory here and I catch the contents of root.txt and there we are, we get the root flag. So yeah, that was a fairly straightforward uh, box in regards to how I have covered. This is, the, uh, this is the, the way that I used. And as I said, my initial time going through this box, I did it quite a while ago, uh, was, you know, I got stuck with a lot, of, um, a lot of rabbit holes and I was trying to run, you know, various CVEs and stuff like that, which wasn't giving me anything. So 
Again, it's very important that you understand enumeration. That's what I wanted to cover here. You can see the ton of information we were able to get uh, from our, let me just open up a new tab here, from our Nmap results, we were able to, to tell, you know, from DNS, we have a DNS server running. And then from DNS, we were able to enumerate a lot more information. Now, if I would have just ignored DNS, which is, uh, it happens quite a bit, I wouldn't have been able to enumerate the other subdomains like admin. Uh, if, let me just open up Hack the Box here. Let me just close up Burp. Uh, you can see we have Kronos or Hack the Box, which is pretty much just a you know boilerplate template set up here. And then of course, they wanted you to, to perform more DNS enumeration. Uh, so if we did that, we're able to get uh, you know admin, uh, the admin.kronos.hackthebox page here where we were able to perform you know some simple SQL uh, bypassing here. So we'll just get rid of that. And hopefully this will allow us to actually access that for some weird reason, it's not. Uh, that being said, again, this is the web page here, a fairly simple box, a fairly straightforward, a very good combination of both web services and a local uh, Linux enumeration, which uh, again, in regards to SQL injection, I'm going to be making videos on that because it's very important that I cover it, uh, you know, very well, because you need to understand PHP, you need to understand how to deal with databases, how queries are sent etc etc so that being said that's going to be it for this video guys uh, let me know what you think uh, how you guys went through this box i'd love to know um, you know if i missed anything interesting or anything particular and i'll be seeing you in the next video i just want to take a few minutes to thank all our patreons that support us on patreon.com forward slash hackersploit so thank you very much your support is truly appreciated and uh, you really keep us going so thank you to the Patreons, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard.